2021 has been the year of the short squeeze with GameStop and then AMC increasing by around 20 to 30 X at their highest points this year. And it appears that two new companies have kind of come onto the scene and are possibly on their way to another squeeze. Both are up more than two X in the last week and building momentum. So let's talk about these companies, why they are potential squeeze targets and What's different this time versus GameStop and AMC? And one thing, I just need you to promise me, if you're interested at all in either of these companies, just make sure to watch to the end of the video where I talk about risk factors. I want you to have the whole picture before you do anything crazy. So first off, let's briefly cover what a short squeeze is. We'll just do a brief recap. So investors have the ability to short a stock, which basically means they're betting against shares going up. So if the share price goes down, a short seller makes money. Now, certain companies accumulate a high amount of short volume relative to their total shares. GameStop is now famous for this because at one point they had 140% of their shares sold short, more shares shorted than the company even had, which is insane. A short squeeze happens when the price of a highly shorted stock jumps up dramatically. This causes a portion of the short sellers, those who are betting the price goes down, causes a portion of the short sellers to exit their position, to cut losses and mitigate potential risk of the price going even higher. The exiting of the short position causes the share price to go even higher, which then leads to even more short sellers cutting their losses, making the share price go even higher again and again in this kind of avalanche upwards in price. And this can theoretically go on forever because a short seller can theoretically lose an infinite amount of money. But in reality, it doesn't actually go on forever because normal shareholders are humans who want to make money. So those who are long on a stock that is increasing will begin selling the price as the price surges and things will eventually stabilize before the price hits infinity. Either way, a short term 10 to 20 X on your investment can make you a whole lot of money. So who doesn't want that? And that's what a short squeeze can do. So now let's talk about the potential next squeeze targets. These are support.com and Vinco Ventures. Kind of sounds like Jinko Jeans, but it's, it's Vinco, Vinco Ventures. So let's take a look at the stocks here. First one is support.com going over the computer. We can see in the last five days, we're up 154% a big surge in the last five days. And then Vinco Ventures, we are up 107% in the last five days. And here we have the short volume ratio for each. So support.com is about 48%, Vinco Ventures is about 60%. Um, support.com has gone down recently. This is according to Fintel, by the way. And the put and call ratio is 0.61 for support.com. The higher this ratio, the more likely we could see what's called a gamma squeeze and then 0.18 for Vinco Ventures. Now let's break these companies down further, starting with support.com. So support.com provides tech and customer support services. It's kind of a boring company. It's fairly small, has a market cap of 880 million, even after the recent price surge. Now taking a look at their financials, we're looking at sales that are decreasing over time, net income that's positive, but small and also decreasing over time, and a fairly large amount of debt and total liabilities. Total liabilities of 4.83 million, which is fairly high compared to the relatively low earnings. Now here's where it gets interesting. This is where it gets interesting. Support.com, it's planning a merger with Greenridge Generation Corporation. And here is the press statement on this. So I highlighted some of the more interesting points here. So Greenridge Generation is a vertically integrated Bitcoin mining and power generation facility in upstate New York. They announced that they plan to become a NASDAQ listed company through a merger with support.com. So support.com will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Greenridge, which is expected to be listed on the NASDAQ. Greenridge is expected to be the only US public company operating a vertically integrated power generation asset and Bitcoin mining operation. So they have their own power plant and they plan to do Bitcoin mining. And they say that their their competitive advantage is their, their economy of scale here and you know generating their own power and having all of their own assets on hand. So we have this fairly boring company, support.com, with you know subpar financials, but highly shorted and building steam, combining with a kind of crypto play. This could be enough to make this thing really pop. So here's how this would work. Support.com is really being acquired by Greenridge. Support shares would then trade under a new ticker symbol, G-R-E-E, -E, 
after the merger happens. Under the current deal, support.com shareholders will receive 0.124 shares of common stock of Greenridge for each one share of support. So what does that mean? It basically means if you had 1,000 shares of support.com before the merger, after the merger, it would transition into 124 shares of Greenridge. The deal still needs to be voted on by support.com shareholders though, and that's scheduled for September 10th. So it hasn't officially gone through. And there's one thing I wanna point out, this rapid increase in share price has led some to wonder if the deal could potentially be restructured before finalization to the benefit of support.com shareholders. I don't wanna to speculate too much as to whether that may happen, but I've seen that speculation happen. Now, once public, the join company could potentially see very high multiples, similar to like a Riot blockchain who has a PDE of 117. So we have this culmination of events here, a hurting company that's highly shorted, the price going up, which will likely increase short position and increase the odds of a short squeeze, a crypto play, which is really hot right now, and a tailwind of media attention as this story is just beginning to be spread. No matter what, it's gonna be interesting to watch what happens here over the next couple months. Now there are risks here though, and this is far from a sure thing. So I'm gonna break down the other company first and then we're gonna talk about the risks of both of these squeezes. The next company is Vinco Ventures, ticker symbol BBIG. Now they are a media company that kind of buys brands and then attempts to make their traffic more profitable. Now let's take a look at their financials. We'll see that this is also kind of a struggling company financially, which is totally expected with a highly shorted company. So this is a small company with a market cap of, of about $430 million on 15 million million dollars in sales and we can see the sales have bounced around just a little bit now they currently have no earnings if we go down to their net income we can see that their net income is slightly improving over the the year prior however we've been here before so it's not really reliably improving and they do have a fair amount of debt as well liabilities are fairly high at around 14.5 million which is pretty close to their annual sales now one thing that surprised me here is this is an acquisition company so with an acquisition company especially a small one i would expect their sales to really bump up in certain years and that's not really what we're seeing here you would expect as they take on a new company, they get all of those additional sales, we'd see revenue jump up. Um, so that kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit taking a look at this company. Um, but again, this is a struggling company and that's why it's highly shorted and that's why it's on the radar right now in the first place. Now they do have another acquisition in the pipeline, which some people are pretty excited about. If we take a look at this, uh, Vinco Ventures and Zash Global Media um, through a joint venture have acquired 80% of Lomotif. Now Lomotif has a record number of monthly active users of 30 million. So this is a fairly large platform here. And they also appear to have some kind of NFT deal through an NFT commerce site, enft.com. So we have kind of another crypto play here. But all in, we don't have a whole lot of information on Vinco Ventures, um, likely because it's so small and there's not quite as much behind it as there is the support.com. So in summary with Vinco Ventures, we have another highly shorted small cap company with fairly rough financials that has seen a rally in the recent past with their highly shorted shares and some hype behind the company and a small crypto play through NFTs, not nearly the size of the crypto play with support.com. Now let's compare support.com and Vinco to the AMC and the GME squeezes and talk risks because this is really important. Both Support.com and Vinco check the boxes in terms of a high amount of shares shorted and momentum in the right direction. But, but there's something that I just can't help myself from, from thinking about. Both AMC and GME are household names with physical locations that have great memories attributed to them, you know, video games and watching cool movies. And despite being fairly small public companies, AMC and GME, they were they're much larger than Support and Vinco before the run-up. They were, they were well known beforehand, despite being fairly small. I think at least part of the rally in AMC and GME has to do with the positive emotions attached to them and public, public people knowing about the companies in the first place, where with Support.com and Vinco, they're interesting, but they're companies I've never heard of before heard of before this rally and for good reason they're quite small and they're not doing anything that i would i would know about them for unless i happen to personally know someone at the company so i see this as a risk 
in, in a huge squeeze because public sentiment of retail investors means a lot, in my opinion, when it comes to you know, a retail squeeze like this. Now, I could see this being mitigated if there was a whole lot more press around the situation, just because we've had short squeezes in the past. If, if everyone's coming together you know, on Reddit, YouTube, and traditional media, and they're saying, this is the next big squeeze, I could see that mitigated. But for that squeeze to happen, you want it so big that you know your, your uncle is asking, hey, you know, how about that support.com stock? Am I right? You want it to be that big where like everyone is talking about it. So then you get enough investors in there and willing to hold through you know, the volatility. Because we're seeing some volatility on this already. And we also need to talk about the upside and downside. From low point to peak, both AMC and GME did you know about 20 to 30x, give or take a little. Support.com is already up 15x this year, and Vinco is up 5x. So while there's still potentially room to go, it isn't likely to see a 30x like an AMC GME. Of course, we can't know for sure. These are much smaller companies, so potentially, you know, it takes less money to run them up you know, 30X, but you just can't bank on it. That's all I'm saying. So here's how I see it. These companies check a lot of boxes in terms of a short squeeze, and it's an absolutely fascinating story. And, you know, it makes sense that a lot of people are like, hey, this could be another short squeeze. But this is very high risk. The potential downside here appears to me to be about 75%, where the possible upside is 5 to 10x. Now, I know some people watching this are going to be mad that I'm saying that there's a downside at all, but I feel like it's my duty to point out everything I see. That way you have the full picture and you can decide what you want to do because none of this is financial advice. So what's next? I would say take this information, and if you like one of these companies, dive even further into the, into the research, become an expert, and see what you can find. And if you'd like to see if I end up buying a position in one of these companies, you can always join my Patreon, where I post even more in-depth information and my buy and sell alerts that will be linked down in the description. So that's going to do it for today. I hope that this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, just give it a like. That's all I ask for, and I hope you have a profitable day.